Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. This is how to memorize information for finals. I'm Paul Novak and I think you'll find this webinar to be very helpful especially if you have a lot of uh, reading that you've been doing over the course of the semester and now it's a matter of like committing that information to memory and we're going to go at a fast pace because I know that you might not have a lot of time before finals so I want to cover a number of things. First of all we're going to be learning how to remember and specifically what we're going to cover here is how your memory works how to memorize information in a precise order if you need to, how to memorize detailed information. So that goes, maybe you have to remember this, these seven things, but you have to know seven or eight things about each one of those. And then there's maybe vocabulary you might have to remember. We'll discuss that. And we'll also cover how to memorize numbers, dates, and equations. So first, let's get into how your memory works. Think about how songs get stuck in your head. We know it's all about repetition. That helps you to remember. We all know that. Uh, but it's also important to understand that we inherently have trouble remembering abstract information versus visual. Visual information is very easy to remember. Like, you ever forget someone's name? You probably remember their face, but it's harder to remember the name because the name is abstract. And faces are visual. Visual information is always easier to remember. So that's something we need to understand, and we'll utilize that in some of the memory techniques that we discuss here. Now, your visual recall is better than your verbal recall. What I mean by that, if you think about companies, they know this very well. Not only will they have a name, they'll also have a logo, maybe even a mascot. McDonald's is a good example of this. So the process of visualization and trying to picture things in your mind, or sometimes they'll call it your mind's eye, can be a helpful way to commit things to memory. Also, association. This is another thing that impacts your memory very deeply. You, you remember things when you associate them to other things that you may already know. Exaggeration helps. This is something, anything that's out of the ordinary, that's weird, funny, strange, is always more memorable. Actually, advertisers know that very well. That's why they go through all the trouble to try to make you laugh or have some sort of ridiculous commercial because they know you're more likely to remember them if they do that. That's why we have, you know, a talking gecko, you know, representing Geico instead of just, you know, someone wearing a suit telling you, hey, look, you could save a lot of money on your car insurance, give us a call. Instead, we get a talking gecko with what I think is a British accent. So we remember things that are weird, out of the ordinary. So repetition, association, visualization, and exaggeration are all things that have an, uh, a major influence on how you remember. So let's utilize some of that information. I want to discuss a memory technique that can help you remember things in a precise order. If you need to remember things, it, let's say you have 10 things that have to be remembered as like a step one, step two, step three, maybe it's a certain kind of a process. Um, whatever it happens to be, the numeric peg system, this is a technique that will help you remember things in a very precise order. So what you do with the numeric peg system is every number becomes a visual. The no, number one becomes a pencil. The number two is a swan. The number three is McDonald's. So basically, you assign a visual for every number. Four is a chair. It's upside down, but a chair. Five is a hook. Um, now, by the way, these numbers can represent different visuals. You don't have to use hook if you prefer to use something else. You basically create, you know, the six kind of looks like a cherry. It's not exact, but it's a visual approximation. Seven is a lightning bolt. Eight is a racetrack. Nine is a balloon. Ten is maybe a place setting or a bowl and a spoon on the side. Why are we doing this? Well, once we have all these things committed to memory, we've taken abstract things like numbers, turned them into visuals like one, a pencil, two, a swan. And then whatever these topics are, we're going to associate visually and preferably in an exaggerated way. Each topic gets associated to its respective visual. So McDonald's, that could be something to do with Big Macs, French fries, Ronald McDonald, and some visual with this. So let me give you an example. Um, we sometimes will do this in our class. We'll, we have this book, Brain Rules, um, and you see the subtitle there, 12 Principles for Surviving and Thriving at Work, Home, and School. Let's say you've read this book over the course of the semester, among other books, and maybe you need to memorize all 12 of these principles. Maybe you've got to remember them in order. How do we do it? Well, every one of the principles is listed here, right? One, two, three, and so on. Basically, each one of these gets associated with, you know, our numeric peg system. 
And again, I'm showing the contents right here. This could apply differently uh, based on your material. You might be trying to memorize topics from your chapter. So you might have 10 sections or eight sections in your chapter. By the way, if you have more than 10, don't worry, there's an 11 and 12 here. We'll discuss that in a moment. But let's talk about one through 10 first. These are the chapter titles, evolution, exercise, wiring, attention, so on and so forth. So what we need to do is come up with a visual association that is maybe a little weird, exaggerated, or out of the ordinary that is going to combine evolution and a pencil in it. Now, the way you do this, if you've ever played like a word association game, you think, okay, evolution, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? For me, it's Charles Darwin, and he's associated with evolution. Well, I would picture Charles Darwin with maybe he's evolved to have arms as pencils. Um, that doesn't make any sense, but that's actually okay because things that don't make sense, things that are weird, are more memorable. The way it'll work later is if I have to remember what number one is, I'll just be reminded of the pencil, and that's easy because one and a pencil have the same shape, and then I'll remember, oh yeah, there was a Charles Darwin walking around with a, you know, weird pencil arms. For number two, if we have to remember exercise for number two, which is the title of the chapter, well, that needs to be associated with our swan. By the way, I, I chose a swan for my number two, and you could use these images yourself, but you could have chosen another visual to represent the number two. But let's say we're going with a swan. We need to associate that with exercise. Uh, I would picture, you know, maybe this swan has been, you know, exercising a lot and really working out, and uh, he's starting to get kind of buff. He's got arms that are just like human, huge bicep arms. Uh, again, doesn't make any sense, but we go with it. Why? Because when you're asked what's number two later on, or you have to think about it and recall that information, number two will remind you of the swan, and then hopefully you'll pick, you'll be reminded of this weird image of a super buff swan with giant arms from exercising a lot. So we would do this for all of the chapters. I'm not going to go over all the details as far as it goes here. I think you get the idea. Let's discuss how we would do 11 and 12 and anything beyond that. So if you have to remember... Um, more than 11 things, you need to choose a visual rule or theme that would apply to all numbers 11 through 20. And this is important because this will help you scale the system up. Because if you need to remember 30-some things or 47 things, I mean, I hope you don't have to deal with that. But if you do, this is a strategy for doing it. You're, let's say the theme was snow. By the way, this theme could be whatever you want. It could be rain. It could be something totally random, but it, you need some kind of a theme. And the way it works is 11 would be the reuse of a pencil. Why? Because we have the number 1 in the number 11. And then we need to use the theme of snow. Now this could be something to do with a blizzard, a snowman, a snowball fight, you know, four feet of snow, whatever you want. And then whatever your topic is, these three components need to be woven together into a visual story that is out of the ordinary in some way. And uh, trust me, it'll end up being out of the ordinary because it's kind of hard to picture a story that makes sense that has pencils, something snow-related, and whatever your topic might be. For 12, we do the same thing. We're using the swan again, but we got to use swan plus snow plus whatever our topic has is that we have to remember. And this actually allows you to scale the system up greatly. If you had to remember 45 things in a precise order, you just create a new rule for 21 through 30, for me, I use the rule of a, a fight, so a fight has to be happening in all of the, you know, items between these numbers. Uh, maybe babies are used for 31 through 40. 41 through 50 could be celebrities, and these themes can be whatever you want. I'm, I, I'm just giving you some examples here. So that's the numeric peg system. Now, some of you might be wondering, what if the information is very, very detailed? What if it's not just, you know, I got to remember these 12 things? What if not only do I have to remember those 12 things, but I got to remember seven or eight details about each one of them? Well, there's a great technique that was used by the ancient Greeks called the memory palace technique, also known as the method of loci or loci. And the ancient Greeks, this, was a few, this technique is a few thousand years old. I wish I learned it earlier in high school or when I was in college. That would have helped me a ton. But you can utilize this. Basically, you choose a location you're familiar with. It could be your home, your workplace. It could be your campus. It's best to start with wherever you're living right now. And you choose an ordered walkthrough of your home. So here's an example of mine. There's the mailbox, front door, stairway, living room, hallway, and so on and so forth. Why are we doing this? Well, this walkthrough of your home is going to be associated with topics. And those topics 
if you associate the topics, whatever the topic number three is, if stairway is your number three, then you just picture that topic. You need a visual reference for this topic with the stairway. The reason why this technique is very effective is because, well, you can utilize multiple memory palaces. Let, let me give you an example of one. Let's say the topic was technology. The memory palace is your home. Let's say this is the these are the first five locations in your home, in your walkthrough of your home. And let's say you have to remember these first five things plus many more. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix. Let's say you got to remember them in order. Well, for Apple, we need a visual for Apple. It could be apples, you know, the actual fruit. Or it could be, you know, iPhones, MacBooks, Steve Jobs. Um, I w and I have to associate that with mailbox. So I would picture maybe the ghost of Steve Jobs flying out of my mailbox after I open it. Or maybe you open your mailbox and you f discover there are 20 some different iPhones in your mailbox. Or maybe you open your mailbox and a bunch of apples fall out. Any ridiculous weird image would work to help you remember the first thing is Apple. For number two, I would picture a giant box from Amazon sitting out in front of my front door. For number three, the stair if it was stairway, I would picture Mark Zuckerberg sitting on my stairway checking his Facebook. Um, Twitter, I would picture a bunch of blue birds flying around in my living room. For Netflix, I would picture a flat screen TV with Netflix playing maybe a house of cards in the middle of my hallway. Again, a weird image is best because it wouldn't make sense that a flat screen television would be on the ground of my hallway. Now, the nice thing about this technique is you can utilize it. What, what if you have to remember details? Well, if there are three details you need to associate and remember related to Twitter, well, you got to put those three details. First of all, you need to get come up with a visual for each one, and they need to be put in three different areas of your living room. So it might be on the small couch, the coffee table, and the big couch. Or, again, the memory palace is customized based on your living, so there's no reason for you to memorize my memory palace here. So the cool thing about this technique is you might have to remember something for your history class, your English literature class, your engineering class, you can have multiple memory palaces. You know, it could be, you know, your dorm room, your parents' place, your buddy's place, your uncle's, your grandma's place, and you come up with walkthroughs of all those places, and this allows you to memorize tons and tons of information. It was utilized by the ancient Greeks. It's a tried and true memory technique that unfortunately isn't really taught um, in the schools, but I mean, that's a whole separate matter and issue we're not going to get into right now. Now, what if, what if you have to memorize vocabulary? There's another technique called the similar sound technique, and this helps you memorize vocabulary very easily. What you do is you got to look for a similar sound within the word. So, balone phobia. Any idea what this means? This is the fear of needles. How are we going to memorize that? Well, uh, I'm going to look for a similar sound in this word. I already know phobia means fear of, so I would focus on the beginning, and again, this is a fear of needles. It would be nice if they just called it needle phobia, right? But it's balloon phobia. Uh, we focus on balloon, and for balloon, that kind of sounds like balloon. I would picture a big blue balloon, and or maybe it's a red balloon, and this balloon is afraid of needles coming towards it. Maybe I'm picturing these needles coming towards it in slow motion, the balloon is sweating, it's yelling for help, and the balloon is clearly afraid of needles. Now, why am I going through all the effort to paint this weird picture in my mind? Because we understand that principle. What influences your memory is anything out of the ordinary and weird is more memorable than the normal and mundane. So, same thing if we had a word like anthrophobia. This is the fear of people. Now, you could have got that from the prefix anthro. But what if you didn't pick up on that? Well, you could also find the similar sound ant, right, like an actual ant, um, the insects. And I would just picture a bunch of ants being afraid of people stepping on them. So maybe, uh, you know, you picture a village of ants and just footsteps crashing down on this village, and they're all running because they're afraid of people. Now, there's one, one other thing you can do, and that is uh, what, what if you had to remember maybe numbers or dates or equations, you can kind of combine some of these methods. You can combine the numeric peg system. Let's say you had an equation or a number you had to remember. And, uh, you know, you ever hear this little mnemonic, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue? That's just a little mnemonic and rhyme to remember the number 1492. But you could also, you know, 
1492, if you didn't have that rhyme in your mind already and you had to memorize this, well, you would have to choose, involve in a visual story in your mind, a pencil, a chair, a balloon, and a swan to re represent 1492 and something related to Christopher Columbus. Okay. Uh, another example here. What if you had to remember uh, this number, 3.5% GDP growth in Ireland? Well, we need a visual reference for three, that's McDonald's. We need a visual reference for five, that's a hook. And I would picture something related with pirates. And we need a visual reference for Ireland. So you might picture, uh, maybe you picture you go to McDonald's and there is a, there's an actual pirate there. And we need a visual for Ireland, maybe he's fighting a leprechaun. So you go to McDonald's and there is a pirate fighting a leprechaun. That would remind us of McDonald's, the five for the hook, and Ireland. So you build these stories because, again, the human mind is just not wired to remember abstract information. Numbers, words, that's all abstract. We need to turn that into visual information. And if you make it exaggerated and weird, like a pirate fire fighting a leprechaun at McDonald's, that enhances your ability to remember the information. Now, there's one other thing here. So you, we got to remember growth. What Because what if you're looking at GDP numbers for um, a variety of countries? Well, some of them, some GDP numbers are down, so you might have a decline in GDP. Um, so I would picture actually, you know, this, but the pirate is fighting a super tall leprechaun, which doesn't make sense based on this, you know, given wisdom, leprechauns are usually considered small. But I would picture a giant leprechaun fighting a normal-sized pirate. And that giant leprechaun would remind me, oh, growth, tall, high. Now, if, you know, we would need another image for a decline. So... Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you had to remember equations, you do something very similar. You know, you assign images to the following numbers. We already have that. Pencil, Swan, McDonald's, and so forth. You need images for your variables, X, Y, Z, whatever variables you have. Operators need imagery as well. Pluses, minus, division, subtraction, uh, you know, multiplication, parentheses. Let, let me give you an example. So we already have the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, from the numeric peg system. We have those with visuals. For variables, and X could, X's remind me of uh, runways. I do a lot of traveling for work. We do workshops all across the country here, um, not just in the U.S., but we're doing them internationally as well. So X's remind me of airplane runways. Um, so if I had an X that needed to be remembered in an equation, I would picture that. Now, Y's remind me of like a wishbone because it has a similar shape. A Z could just remind me of a zebra. An A could be for apple. B could be like a golf you know, a putter or a golf club. C could be Pac-Man or a cat. Now the operators, these could represent action. So we're basically building a whole story to memorize an equation. So a plus sign could could mean that there are things being stacked in the store in the visual story. A minus sign could represent an action of something being stolen. A multiplication sign could be something being multiplied many, many times. The division, things being cut. You know, parentheses, maybe someone being hugged or tied together, because that's what parentheses do. They tie things together. Exponents, you know, I would picture th something flying or floating. So, you know, if you had like five square, uh, the two, which is five square, the two would be a swan, and five reminds me of a hook, which is reminding me of pirates. I would picture, you know, a pirate kind of swinging his hook, trying to hit a swan from the air that is, maybe the swan is attacking this pirate. Now, this would just be one component Maybe there's additional components in this equation, but I would have to tie all that together into a story. So if you had like slope intercept form here, y equals mx plus b, you basically need visuals for each one of these things, and you need to turn this into some kind of a story. Now, this is a very short equation. A lot of people can memorize it, no problem. But if you had something longer, turning it into a visual story will definitely help you remember it more effectively. Now, this all kind of falls into place with you know, before you memorize anything, you need to have read something and comprehended the material, and then you got to commit things to memory. So uh, with efficient reading, there's really three things that are necessary. Speed, we want to be able to read fast. Comprehension, I need to be able to understand my material well. And retention, I need to remember the material. So these are three areas that are extremely important. And here at Iris Reading, what we do is we help students and professionals learn speed reading, 
and memorization techniques. You can take additional courses if you want on our website. We have online courses. We have in-person classes as well. In fact, we are the largest provider of speed reading and memorization uh, throughout the world. We've been doing these classes now throughout the U.S. We've done them in over 50 cities. We're now doing them internationally in places like London, Singapore. If you go to our website and click on in-person classes at the top there, you can find a whole list of schedules. And we do a lot of private workshops too. So if you wanted to invite us to your company or your school, you can get in touch. I'll have my contact information on the screen in a moment here. Uh, and we've done these workshops for, you know, from students at Harvard and Stanford to employees at NASA, Google, LinkedIn, and a lot of other places. Um, if you're interested in the online courses, uh, click on online courses on our website, irisreading.com, and you'll see there's three different online courses that we have. There's a foundational speed reading course, there's a speed reading mastery course, and then there's an advanced comprehension and memory course. These are a great way to optimize your reading ability. So, you know, imagine if you could double or triple your reading speed and understand the material very well, be able to utilize a variety of memorization techniques. And that we just went over a number of them here. Uh, if you go to our website, there's actually a special where you can get all three of these courses instead of paying, you know, the prices here. You can get them all together in a bundle at a package price of $149. Uh, there is an expiration date on that offer. Go to irisreading.com if you're interested. And I've got my contact information right here. Um, I wanted to make sure we did this webinar so that students can kind of have something to work with leading up to finals. I know I, I've been going at a relatively quick pace here purposely because I know there's not a lot of time. Some of you uh, maybe were reluctant maybe even to check out this webinar because you're like, man, I've got all this reading and memorization I need to do for my finals. Uh, but it's always useful to sharpen the saw. And when I say sharpen the saw, I mean, you know, improving your skills. And when it comes to your learning skills, a lot of people, you know, don't, don't think about how they can improve their ability to study information. That's what we help students do, students and professionals. If you have any questions, I've got my contact information on the screen. You can shoot me an email, paul at irisreading.com, or if you wanted to reach out by phone, phone number's there. Also, uh, you know, Iris is still a relatively small organization. We're, we've been growing a lot over the past few years, uh, but we've grown a lot through word of mouth. So please, if you found this helpful, uh, pass, you know, pass the email along, like us on Facebook, you know, mention us on Twitter. Uh, we really appreciate the information. And, you know, feel free to get in touch if you found any of these uh, techniques helpful. or if you, There are other techniques that maybe you've been doing uh, that you've had success with. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm based out of Chicago. And uh, if you're ever in Chicago, uh, let me know. And I'd be happy to give you any tips on where places to go and things to see. But ultimately, uh, we want to make sure that we help as many students prepare for their finals as best as they can utilizing these memorization techniques. So again, go to the website if you're interested in additional courses for speed reading and memorization. And I want to thank you so much for checking out this webinar. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.